Welcome to our YouTube channel. Chip and I plan to be doing a lot more uh, videos for you. If you like them, please click on like and click on subscribe and click on the bell so that you'll be notified every Sunday when we uh, post our new videos. Okay, so we're gonna pick some uh, Roma to tomatoes, which is also known as Italian plum tomatoes, supposed to be uh, one of the most phytonutrient rich tomatoes and good for sauces and uh, the, probably the most renowned uh, tomato for sauces, San Marzano, is a type of Italian plum or a type of Roma tomato. We started picking these about uh, two weeks ago. As you see, there's a lot of green ones on here and a lot that are ripe. Okay, the next uh, tomato that we're going to pick is, the, is an heirloom tomato, Cherokee Purple. The cracking is one of the most common explanations is uneven watering. We tried to water this very evenly uh, on regular intervals and not overwater it. So we were letting it almost get dry and then watering it. And that turned out to be usually every two to three days. Um, one of the uh, things that's supposed to be excellent to minimize cracking is mulching, which we did mulch. The whole premise of mulching being it'll maintain soil mo moisture and you won't have these very wet and dry periods uh, that the, that the um, soil will maintain its moisture and that's supposed to minimize cracking. This uh, row is Park's Improved Whopper, which would infer that it's very large and it is pretty big, but it's not quite a whopper in my opinion. But uh, we have lots of tomatoes, they vary in size. They're all, you know, a little bit on the bigger side. And um, I, I, don't, I think I might have picked one or two whoppers already, but now we've got quite a few ripe. Here's one of our best whoppers. It does have a little bit of cracking, but it's looking beautiful. A beautiful Parks Improved Whopper. So this row is a better boy, and we've got eh, lots of tomatoes, just a few ripe. And uh, so I'll pick uh, four or five, and uh, there's some that are just another day or two away, and lots more like a week away. So this is a celebrity, and we've got a row here. You can see where we tried out different staking methods. First is the Candyland um, cherry tomato, which is fine. It's not, I never had used it before. It's not my favorite. Not as spectacular as those really sweet uh, cherry tomatoes that I would probably uh, prefer, or that I would prefer, like Sun Sugar and, and those varieties. These are the Texas cages. Seems like I used to buy a lot more, a lot bigger, sturdier Texas cages. Um, these, as the, you can see, different staking techniques that we used, and some of them are being overwhelmed by the crop. After Celebrity, you see it gets uh, slightly bigger, and those are a variety called Goliath and uh, which would infer a huge tomato. It's a very good sized tomato. So you'll see what we really had the most luck with in terms of tomato support is not the individual stakes, but where we used uh, metal stakes that we drove into the ground and then used twine between the stakes. And on the, like the uh, Cherokee Purple that are really heavy, big tomatoes, that worked out much better than, um, than this row, which was all individual staking, just different ones in the marketplace that we tried out. I just pruned a bunch of uh, basil yesterday because it was uh, going to seed and you can see we've got more basil than we know what to do with so I've been, I made a bunch of uh, pesto last night. I picked like four big bags and only used one um, but uh, the pestos, I mean the basil's growing like crazy and uh, I pruned it, it'll sprout again now and continue to grow. In, in, we have some Italian parsley over there. In the uh, basil I put, uh, I mean in the pesto, I put Italian parsley too, which is a nice combination of Italian parsley and basil. So now we're on to Japanese eggplant. I only planted two plants. We've had quite a few. Um, this one uh, I'm going to harvest right now, and then there's a couple of smaller ones on here. It uh, is still blooming, and um, we don't have a lot on right now. I've picked, I don't know, maybe 10 of them, and uh, 
Here's one that we can pick uh, that's much smaller and a beautiful color. And uh, so Japanese eggplant did great, didn't do anything to it, just planted it and let it grow and bloom and bear. We've planted three times types of cucumbers and we've gotten more cucumbers than we know what to do with. The three kinds are an English burpless cucumber, Armenian cucumber, and a Japanese cucumber. And I'll pick uh, a few of each. There, this English uh, burpless one has just continued to bear um, whether we want it to or not. Um, and we've got every day you can come out and find lots of them of different sizes. Very delicious and prolific, easy to grow, and they have never stopped bearing. Whereas the uh, Armenian cucumber, uh, we had quite a few. Right now it's in a holding pattern. It is blooming, but uh, I only I tried to find one to pick and there's not one ready to pick. There's some small, really tiny ones that will be ready to pick soon. And then the uh, Japanese uh, cucumber, We've got a few over here. Uh, this also kind of went into um, a pause, similar to, uh, the, here, these are a nice size, similar to the Armenian, but not as big a pause. And um, I found, there's a bigger one here somewhere. Oh, here's a big one. So you can see what they grow into if you wait a little too long. <laughs> So zucchini squash, I was only going to plant this one, but some of my guys that uh, said they love zucchini squash, so we planted another five or six, and boy, do we have zucchini squash. And kind of the same as the cucumber, if you don't come out here every two or three hours, this happens, uh, where you end up with one this size. <laughs> That's one, obviously, we didn't see. You can see the zucchini is the same color as the leaf and it's easy to uh, end up with zucchini that are bigger than you'd like. Uh, this is more of, a, more of an appropriate size. Beautiful zucchini. Uh, if I look through this whole plant, there's probably five or six more like this. So the watermelon, I think we might have two or three plants. You can see they grow like crazy. And this is our biggest watermelon. We were thinking it might be ripe the earliest in determining um, when to pick it. We're at about, you know, the label says 80 to 90 days, so we're at 86, so we're about the right amount of time. One of the methods that's, uh, you know, some people say to, to knock on it, it's supposed to sound hollow. Well, I can't tell if it's hollow or not hollow, but one of the methods that seems to be widely purported as relatively accurate is um, to look at the tendril, or some people call it a curly cue, and that's the curly cue that is closest to the stem of the plant. If it completely dries, then this is ripe. So we've got cantaloupe uh, also two or three plants. It's not a lot of plants, but cantaloupe and watermelon, as you probably know, they just grow like crazy. And we have a lot of cantaloupe in here. I've picked three. Uh, they were very good. Uh, one of them was splitting. That's why I picked it. The best sign of a ripeness is, well, first of all, I looked at um, the 80 to 90 days and we're at 86. So I know we're about time. And then we want to look at the color and, uh, and find there's quite a few that look like they're about ready to pick because they're starting to get, uh, you know, more of a apricot color rather than a greenish brown color. So I'm going to pick one or two that look like they're ripe and um, we'll give them a try. Tasting the first watermelon of the season, Jorge, Paco, and Sandra.
Hey there, friends. Thanks for watching our video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click on the bell. If you enjoyed this video, have any questions, or just want to say hi, let us know in the comments below. Want to learn more about our products? Then head over to our website, www.johnandbobs.com.